The year is probably around 2001. I'm maybe five, six years old, sitting at home, you know, playing some Super Nintendo, probably some Donkey Kong Country, absolutely killing it. When all of a sudden, I keep losing and getting a game over. My grandmother walks in, she says, probably one of the most important things anyone has ever said to me in my entire life. If at first you don't succeed, try and try again. What is going on? Hey, what's up? Welcome to another episode of Hey Mark, the podcast where I, Mark, get to openly and honestly talk about, you know, mental health, mental illness, self-development, struggles I've overcome in the past, struggles I'm going through currently, and how they all help shape the person that I am today. But all kidding aside, let's jump into what it is I actually wanted to talk about today, which is five quotes that have helped change my life and shape the man that I am today. I'm assuming you could read the title, but I might as well just say it again right there. So five quotes that have really helped shape the guy that I am. And I'm gonna explain, obviously the quote, where I heard it from and how it helped me out. So the very first quote I'm gonna explain is something that I've read in a book. I see it all over social media all the time. And it's a Teddy Roosevelt quote. And that is, comparison is the thief of joy. And this is something that, you know, resonated a lot with me because it's something that I struggled with a lot, which is comparing myself to other people. Maybe I'm trying something that's new, something that I'm not very good at, or maybe just when I have an audience or a spectator, when I'm doing anything really, I always try and compare myself to either people that I've seen do it in the past or people that I know that currently do it. Maybe some YouTube videos that I watched or maybe what I think that I should look like. Maybe I'm comparing myself to other people that are doing it. And essentially, I'm just kind of always in my own head. And this is obviously gonna hurt you in two different ways if you're anything like me. The first way it's gonna hurt you is you're not gonna be present in the moment. You're not gonna be actually thinking about what you're doing. You're thinking about what people are thinking about when they're watching you do it. And so that's probably gonna cause you to make some mistakes. And it's also gonna cause you to not enjoy what you're actually doing, right? so the second way that it's going to hurt you is you're not going to actually be grateful for what you have. You know, say I'm, you know, driving my truck and I'm sitting in traffic and some guy pulls up in a nicer, newer, more jacked up with nicer rims and tires, just a better truck than mine. You know, I'm going to look at him and say, man, I really wish I had that truck. His is so much nicer than mine. People will probably think I'm way cooler. Maybe I have more money. Maybe I'm more successful if I had that truck. But maybe there's somebody that's riding by on a bicycle that looks at my truck and thinks, man, that guy's so lucky that he gets to just drive. And maybe someone else is sitting there looking at their bike being like, man, at least they get to bike around. I just have to walk around everywhere. And then maybe someone's that, you know, has gotten in a car accident or, you know, maybe they just aren't able to walk. Look at that person and say, damn, I wish I could just walk on my two feet. You know, we always try and compare ourselves to others and what we have to others. And that obviously is a really good way to start feeling like you don't have enough. You could always try and compare yourself to, you know, people that have less than you, but that's just kind of a form of looking down on other people. And I don't think that that's a really good way to actually boost your confidence or self-esteem either, because those things should come from within. And no, that's not some cheesy little quote that I'm gonna throw in this video as one of the quotes that helped change the person that I am, I seriously think that that should come from within. As stupid and cliche as that sounds, that's the truth. And no, I didn't just come from a yoga class and I'm not your guru, okay? So let's get on to the next quote, which is a quote that my roommate and a guy that's been on, you know, a couple of my videos, one of my best friends, Aiden Brow, told me this quote probably two weeks ago, maybe a week ago, and it absolutely changed my mind on a lot of different things I've been struggling with recently. It's a Dr. Seuss quote, and it goes a little bit something like this. Be who you are and say what you feel because those who mind don't matter and those who matter don't mind. 
And the reason that that quote has helped me out so much is because I don't think I should be worried about people and what they think of me when I openly talk about different things that I've gone through. I don't think that I should be fearing people judging me when they hear about a lot of the things that I do on a daily basis, maybe decisions that I make, like to wake up early, go to bed early, or not drink alcohol. A lot of these things I've been always worried about and it's something that, you know, I feel like people may judge me for, people might judge me for being so, you know, energetic and yelling all the time and feeling like I gotta share all these different stories. But at the end of the day, the people that matter don't mind and the people that mind don't matter. I think that sharing things, being open and being honest and authentic with people is a way to make the world a better place. I think that when we just, you know, show our highlight reels and show how amazing we are all the time, I don't think that's positive for us. And I don't think that's positive for other people as well. I think that it's a good display of, you know, true character when you can be open and authentic and honest about yourself, no matter what, and open about, you know, obviously the successes that you have, but also open about the failures you have so you can actually get help and, you know, learn and actually understand your situation a lot better and then be able to not make those mistakes or failures in the future. And so I think that one's pretty self-explanatory and it comes from a really cool source. Dr. Seuss, go read your children books. Is that a funny thing to say? <laughs> I'm keeping it in, I don't care. <laughs> The next quote is a quote from a book called Can't Hurt Me. It's by David Goggins. And if you don't know who David Goggins is and you're looking for any self-help, self-development, motivation, inspiration, or any word that ends in Asian, go and check out this book or just YouTube the guy, listen to some podcasts. David Goggins is probably one of the coolest dudes you can listen to. Very, very motivating, very raw and 10 times more authentic than me. So, David Goggins has this quote, be your own hero. And what he means by that is, he came from a very, very messed up situation, you know, uh, messed up family life, messed up home life, you know, dealing with a lot of different issues like racism and learning disabilities and all of these issues in his life. And one thing that he came to realize is, no one's gonna be your hero in this life. And when I heard him say that, it just clicked with me because I realized that, you know, a lot of the time when I was dealing with my mental health, you're know, dealing with depression and anxiety as a little kid, I was, I was always thinking to myself, you know, why is this happening to me? When is it going to get better? Why me? And, you know, I was kind of waiting for almost somebody to come and save my life for me. I was going to different doctors and counselors when I was in my you know, early 20s, just basically looking for somebody to fix me. And then I realized that, you know, nobody's gonna be your hero. Nobody's gonna swoop in and just snap their fingers and just make your life better, give you some magic sugar pill. You know, it's gonna take a lot of hard work. It's gonna take, you know, maybe some medical intervention. Maybe you're gonna need some medication. Maybe you're gonna need to talk to a counselor or a doctor or a psychologist or a psychiatrist, or maybe you're gonna need some other third party help I don't know, maybe you go and see a, a naturopath or a holistic doctor, I don't know. Whatever works for you, everyone's solution is gonna be different, but at the end of the day, nobody's gonna be your hero. You need to be your own hero. You have to kind of figure out what it is in your life that's kind of throwing you off balance and figure out you know, who you wanna be and what you need to do to get there. It's gonna be difficult. It's not always a clear cut path. What works for me isn't gonna work for you all the time, but I'm just giving you a little quote from David Goggins, basically telling you to be your own hero and you know, fight this fight for yourself and understand that A, you're capable of making your own life better and B, you're also capable of you know, being a hero for somebody else and being the motivation for somebody else as well. So- I can be a hero, baby. <laughs> I can take away Let's kiss away your pain. Kiss away your pain. <laughs> <laughs> no, dude, that was so sick. I wanted to, I thought it'd be fucking hilarious. That, that, would, that was fucking funny. I'm keeping that in. The next quote that I got for you guys is a quote from a book called The Art of Living. And this book was originally given to me by two people that I worked with. I think it was Stephanie's first and she gave it to John, and then maybe John lent it to me, and then I ended up keeping it for a long period of time. 
So this book's called The Art of Living. It's philosophies from Epictetus. I hope I'm saying that right. And basically it is don't explain your philosophy, embody it. And that is something that really hits home for me because you know, I'm somebody that, you know, I worked in a gym for years and because I dealt with my issues with mental health, I would always try and give people advice with theirs. And, you know, for a long time, I wasn't actually embodying the advice that I was giving to people. And that was something that I really didn't like about myself. I felt like a fraud. I felt like a phony. And when I started to actually abide by a lot of the rules and the tips that I give to people, I noticed a huge shift in my life in self accountability, discipline, but also self confidence and self esteem, and being able to actually, you know, be more confident when I'm talking to people be more confident, just, you know, filming myself like this, or even just being more confident, sharing my authentic self with people on social media, whether that's, you know, waking up at four o'clock in the morning to go exercise, because that's something I enjoy to do and makes me feel good or it's being authentic enough and brave enough to tell my friends, no, I don't wanna have an alcoholic beverage with you right now at a party or a barbecue or whatever setting I'm in, which, you know, for me took a lot of courage and it took years for me to develop that. It was really difficult for me to be able to say no to people because I felt like I was letting them down. I really enjoy that quote, don't explain your philosophy, just embody it. And the very, very last quote I'm gonna read to you is from this book right here. Bang, you've gotta be hungry. The Greatness Within to Win. It's by Les Brown, my man, my favorite motivational speaker, my favorite positivity preacher, my guy. And that is, no matter how bad it seems, do not make a permanent decision based off of temporary circumstances. And basically, what he's talking about is very obvious. He's talking about somebody giving up and ending their own lives. And that is something that hits home for me because I know people that I've grown up with, you know, loved ones, family members, friends, taking their own lives. And it leaves a lot of people confused, upset, sad, heartbroken, missing a loved one, whether it's a father, a mother, a friend. It's a really sensitive subject to talk about, obviously. But I just want to tell people that if you are feeling that way, if you are feeling like giving up, it's not the solution. It's not going to make anything easier for anybody else. And just because you're suffering right now doesn't mean you're going to suffer forever. In my personal opinion, I think that this suffering was given to you because you're strong enough to handle it. It's my personal view and belief that the people that are brave enough, strong enough, formidable enough, are given these challenges, whether it's health complications or mental health complications. You were given this task and this burden because you're strong enough to overcome it. And you were actually chosen to be the motivating factor for somebody else. That's why this quote resonates so much with me. That suffering is temporary. Nothing in this life is permanent except for that decision, the mistake that you don't want to make. Those are the five quotes that changed my life. They helped shape me into the man that I am today. If you enjoyed them, or maybe you want to share your own quote with me, comment it down below or message me on any social media if you're listening to the podcast version of this, at Mark D. Henny. Reach out to me. Let me know your favorite quotes, where you heard them, why they helped you and they might be in my next video. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Have a good week. Have a good month and have a good year. That's it. Peace out.